All right, so we're getting ready to set up uh, VirtualBox, and what we're going to set up in VirtualBox is Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, a lot of you have commented on using the older version of Ubuntu that I've been using, which was 14.04. It is interesting because that's still the recommended version per the Android Open Source Project page. Uh, but you definitely can build Android with newer versions and actually when it comes to Nugget and Oreo and Pi and newer using a newer version is very helpful because you can just straight up download the OpenJDK 8 instead of having to do a workaround like we've been doing in our previous videos while we were using Android 14.04 so I wanted to show you guys how to set this up in uh, VirtualBox, it seems fairly straightforward, but there's a few little tick, uh, little tricks and tips you might find useful. And uh, in particular, when dealing with uh, the virtual device as a um, as a virtual device, and making sure that Ubuntu 18.04 knows that it's in a virtual machine, so it will allow you to do things like shared files and uh, make sure it allows you to adjust the graphics appropriately. So to get started is pretty simple. Of course, the first thing that I did is I downloaded the 18.04 uh, DVD from uh, Ubuntu's website. Very easy to find. And of course, we have VirtualBox installed. And I'm using this on, well, interestingly enough, uh, Ubuntu 18.04. So I'm going to build a virtual machine inside of the machine that actually is the same machine. but. Uh, you can do this from anything like Windows if you're utilizing Windows. You can do this from Macintosh if you're using a, a Macintosh product or an Apple product. Um, <clears throat> lots of different uh, options. And then if you're just running a different version of Linux and you want to uh, have a virtual machine, this is a really good way to do it. One of the big pluses to doing this in a virtual machine as opposed to doing it on your real machine is uh, sometimes you have to install different types of um, programs that may interfere with some of the programs that you would normally use to run your computer. Um, that sounds a little strange, but sometimes uh, you may need a different version of uh, some tool to be able to do something uh, in building your Android that you don't need or don't want to have part of your regular system. So I prefer these virtual machines. It also makes it incredibly clean, incredibly easy to separate out, and uh, and it's very, very handy to do it in this way. However, if you have a regular machine that you can spare, using that machine as a purely installed Ubuntu 18.04, in this case, uh, uh, machine, I think would be a much better use of your resources because you're going to have less overhead. However, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to create a new machine. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose as Linux. It's going to be Ubuntu 64-bit uh, machine. We're going to call it uh, Bionic Beaver Builder because that just sounds cool. Bionic Beaver is actually the name of Ubuntu 18.04 and Builder for you know building our custom ROMs. So Bionic Beaver Builder, a lot of Bs there, and that just sounds pretty awesome. So we'll go with that. We'll say next, uh, memory size, and uh, in this case, we want to, uh, you know, give it, uh, you know, as many uh, gigs of RAM as we can. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it four for now. We can bump this up a little later. Notice that we get into the red over here when we start getting up to eight, eight uh, gigs. But we'll just start here for now, and uh, and we'll work our way up as we need it. So I'll start with five. We're going to create our virtual disk now. Um, you can also download different ones that people have already built, but I, I recommend just using the CD and starting from scratch because then you know exactly what's on there. So let's see, create our virtual disk. Um, what kind of disk we want to use is completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. Um, I stick with the virtual box because that's the only thing I use it for, but if you're going to be running it in different programs other than virtual box, then you might consider the other options. And I like to dynamically allocate the space that way it is not uh, um, you know it's not uh, taking up the space if you're not using it. 
and what uh, size of disks do you want? Now the recommendation is 250 uh, gigabytes of space just for building uh, Android so we'll go ahead and give it 300 gigabytes of space uh, for the whole system. Actually we can just type it in here. There we go. Alright so we've got this chosen here we're going to look at our settings uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that all of our settings look right so it's Linux it's Ubuntu um, we can have some you know snapshot folders description if you want disk encryption if you want I don't really see the point of that if it's just on your machine and nobody else is able to access it your boot order we don't have a floppy drive so we don't need that um, optical disk and then the hard disk I think is a good choice and we're going to go now to display uh, video memory um, you can increase this if you want I wouldn't worry too much about it uh, you won't need 3D and 2D video acceleration just for the purpose of building Android however for VirtualBox for other purposes you might uh, remote display if you want video capture if you want uh, I don't think we'll need that for now and then finally the storage so we know we have our bionic beaver builder disk and then we want our CD so let's go ahead and there we go now you can use by clicking on this little CD icon you can use the actual built-in one from the machine or you can choose one that you've downloaded and we have my VMs, CDs, and Ubuntu 18.04. So there we go, we've got that loaded up there, and now that should be ready to go. Audio, if you need it, uh, not really important for what we're doing, but uh, possibility. Network, most of that usually works all on its own, so you shouldn't have too much trouble there. Uh, serial ports, not that important. However, USB can be important, especially if you plan on hooking up your machine to it. Uh, sometimes when you want to use the 2.0 and 3.0 versions you're going to have to download extra files and things to make those work um, but whatever you decide to choose you have to choose that before you start and you should always stick with that uh, in our case we'll just use 1.1 because it doesn't really matter other than being a little slow uh, it's not gonna not gonna make that big of a deal for us for what we're doing shared folder you can actually choose to share a folder and I'm going to do so and I'm going to select my share folder right here I have it just for that purpose and we're gonna click auto mount because we want it to go ahead and mount that when it's available and folder name is share that's fine we say OK so that will be able to share from my actual host computer to the virtual machine and this is really handy because a lot of times for actually doing the USB transfer to and from the phone or the tablet I typically do that actually in the real world rather than through the virtual machine and mostly because it's a little more convenient out in the real world but also because uh, you can run into some problems with the virtual machine sometimes where if it's a little glitchy or gets hung up um, I've had some problems with that in the past you might not but that's typically the way I do it and then of course user interface so you can set up the way you want things to look I just go with the default all of that's fine and we're gonna go ahead and hit start so of course now it's going to boot up it's going to load straight from the CD that we chose because we chose our boot order to be the CD first and then to be the uh, hard drive so it's booting from the CD right now it's gonna take it a few minutes to load up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until that CD finishes loading. Okay, that CD finished loading, and the very first thing that popped up when the CD loaded was do you want to try Ubuntu or do you want to install Ubuntu? And we're going to go ahead and install it. Of course, you could just try it out just to see how it looks, but uh, anything you do won't be saved uh, permanently. So, English, English uh, for me, if you obviously speak a different language, that's uh, your prerogative to change that. We want a normal installation or we want minimal installation. And we're just going to go actually with the minimal installation. And the reason being is because 
we don't need all the extra stuff. We're going to install all the tools we need because they're very unique to building Android and not necessarily used by anything else. Um, we will go ahead and install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and all that sort of thing because um, it's very helpful to have them but also the additional media formats allows you for the codecs and that sort of thing. So, pretty good idea to go ahead and do that. We'll hit continue. Erase disk and install Ubuntu. That's usually your easiest option. You could choose LVM if you think maybe later in the future you might increase the size of the available drives and space. But since we're using a virtual machine, we can easily just add a new drive and give it all the space that we need. So we don't really need to worry about that. We'll just erase the disk and install Ubuntu. It says, hey, you sure you want to do this? We say, yeah, go ahead, continue. Choosing where we are, um, Fairbanks is not actually on the map, but uh, Anchorage is, which is pretty close, only about 300 miles away, so we'll go with that. And now we need some name and password. So we are Alaska Linux user. And my very super secret squirrel password that I use for this. Oh, didn't match. Can't even type my own password. And we're just going to log in automatically because this is a virtual machine, so I'm not worried about the security of it. It's only going to be on when I'm building Android. Um, if you're worried about security, obviously this would not be a good way to go with a short password and, and logging in automatically. But just for the purposes of building Android, this is, this is a good way to go. So we'll hit continue. And now it's going to start copying the files. And of course, uh, you can click the uh, down arrow here so you can see more interesting stuff. Uh, you can also shrink it just to see the progress bar. And it's going to play this very nice little slideshow for you while it's copying everything that needs to be written down. And not too much here to see. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause this video while the copying continues, and then we'll pick it up once that is complete. Once the copying of files is complete, then it's going to start uh, downloading and retrieving files from off the web, newer versions of the same program, and a few other things that it might need as well. So we'll pick this up after it's downloaded those. And here you can see now installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use this new installation. So we're going to go ahead and restart now and make sure that boots up see how that looks. Of course it's asking us to remove the installation medium. We're going to take our optical drive here and uh, it's saying it wants you to um, unload that there. We can just hit enter for now. We're going to hit F12 and I want to actually start from the hard disk. Now what we can also do is we can actually just power this machine down and we can go to our settings and either change the boot order to not be the optical disk or we could actually remove the optical disk. So for instance we can go to our storage here and it already unloaded that for us which was pretty handy for it to do that, um, but uh, sometimes you might have to do that manually. So we can start that machine up and see if it uh, loads. And of course, uh, if you recall, we put only five available for this machine. For building Android you need at least 8 for the newer versions of Android and I'd recommend 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM and so that's something I'm going to work on here in a little bit seeing if I can't increase that uh, by actually uh, seeing if I have some more RAM laying around that I could utilize for this machine here. But uh, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. The basics of how we set this up is still primarily the same 
um, we would just, uh, if we were able to increase the RAM in the system, we could go to our settings and increase the RAM slider like we saw before. So, great, it did fire up. We'll say next, next. Uh, we don't need to send system information. And uh, we're all ready to go. So we're done. So there it is, all booted up and ready to go. We'll take a look at a couple things that we can do uh, to make it more viable as a resource for us very shortly.